Welcome everybody. Uh, today I have Makola Abdullah, president of Virginia State University. Uh, welcome, President Abdullah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, it's, it's amazing. I rarely find somebody who has a name more difficult than I do. <laughs> <laughs> so so well, why don't I give you a little bit on mine and then you give me a little bit on yours. Go ahead, um, Chief. Makola is, is my birth name. Um, I was born with Makola. Uh, my mother and father uh, became African centered uh, right around the time I was born. They wanted a name that kind of reached out uh, to Africa. And so they named me Makola. And my younger sister is named Ganima. My hmm. older sister's name is Tracy. Right. So, you can so <laughs> right. how'd that happen? <laughs> she can't come She's to the cookout. Ten, exactly. She's, about ten, She's about 10 years older than I am. And so it kind of speaks to the transition that my right. parents in their lives uh and then my last name my original last name is packard my father my father's last name is packard rest in peace and um when my mother converted to islam when we were eight or nine years old she she changed our name to abdullah and so there you there you go that's the full that's the full story how about uh, you partner how, how, how do we get kid <laughs> well i'm a african um my okay. mom's from <laughs> my mom's from king william virginia and uh, my father's from Kenya, uh, East Africa, a place called Neri. Okay. Uh, they met in, when he was going to school in D.C., you know, fell in love, whatever, had me, uh, fell out of love. She came back here. <laughs> she came back here with me. Uh, so I was raised over here, like, uh, completely uh, away from the Kenyan side. And yeah. all, but I have this very Kenyan name, Kiragu Kimate Buta. You know, I've got like all revolutionaries in my name. <laughs> right, right, right. So that's beautiful. It's, it's, it's beautiful, man. Um, you know, that's a, it's a beautiful name. When I saw it, I couldn't wait to say it to you to see if I, I love to try at least to say people's names the way they hear them from their parents. That's a real thing. Uh, I, know how, I know how special it means to me. You know, when somebody comes up to me and they say it, even if they have to practice it. It just means mm -hmm. so much. And so uh, it, it is a pleasure to meet you. Mike. Definitely, definitely. It shows that someone sees you. That's right. When they That's can right. say your name and take time to know it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I wanted to make sure I was being efficient with my time. Uh, okay. And uh, the, the thing that's on everyone's mind right now is uh, the coronavirus, uh, yeah. quarantines, and how all of those things are having uh, just cascading effects across industries. Um, yeah. You're the president of a university, and uh, many people are talking about universities are going to be hard hit because they may not be able to have housing or something like that. Uh, what is it that Virginia State University is doing in order to to assuage those worries and stem that tide? Well, I tell you, um, well, one, this is a, a very difficult time, and I, my, my hats off to everybody who is a, who's a first responder, people who are in the hospitals. Um, also, my hats off to everybody who's been impacted. I'll be fortunate enough so far not to have been personally impacted by the, the health-related challenges, um, though, of course, we'll all be impacted in some way or another by the economic challenges. So it's, um, I don't have to tell you this, it's bigger than Virginia State. You know, everybody's in this same storm together. Albeit, as I like to say, not in the same boat, but all in the same storm. Uh, and so we'll have to come up with some interesting ways to, to deal with it when it's over. I think the biggest challenge is, is that, you know, we're really still in the middle of it. And so I think the answers that a lot of people want to have, are, you know, I, I, I tell them we just don't have them. Uh, now, we're planning for everything, uh, for every single option. We want to be open in the fall. We want to be able to provide the, the best experience for young people that we can in the fall, the end of Virginia State University way, right? The way it's been done. Yeah. Um, so we are planning for that. Uh, we're also planning for if we can't do it that way because of uh, the severity of the coronavirus and want to make sure that people are safe, uh, making sure young people and our uh, young at heart people, our faculty and staff are safe is by far our number one priority. So we're we're planning for everything, and as we get more data, as the, uh, as August comes closer and closer, we we'll make the decision when we can. That's 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 amazing. Um, I teach at a high school in Baltimore City, um, okay. and one of the things that I've experienced is a, a the uh, achievement gap. I think is being well. I hate to even use that term. Uh, <laughs> the mm -hmm. The gap that is created because of the lack of technology and exposure to technology, uh, the digital divide, it seems to be like growing 
now that everyone's moved to online learning has has virginia state also moved to like an online model and have minority students at that age have they shown a similar divide oh, oh definitely this is i think one of the um, silver linings of this um, uh, of coronavirus is that it's highlighting the disparities uh, that we have in our communities um, one of the things I love to say is, you know, that, uh, you know, COVID and coronavirus, it doesn't know race, income, um, or ethnicity, uh, but our healthcare system does, right? Mm. Um, math and science, uh, English and engineering, you know, uh, they don't know race, ethnicity, and income either, but our education system does. Mm. Uh, and so we now know that there's some young people who don't have the ability to do homework and not the ability that they don't have the, the, the smarts or the intelligence, may not necessarily have the technology to do so. And do we have students at Virginia State going through some of the same stuff? Well, yes, sir. Uh, and we're trying to do everything we can to mitigate that. It's, it's, it, it's difficult, of course, we didn't create the situation um, of the coronavirus. Um, but we do need to do a lot better, I think, across the country, making sure that we address these educational inequities, uh, as well as the healthcare inequities uh, that, are, that make our people suffer so much more during this crisis than, than they need to. Yeah, in, in many ways, uh, you know, black minority uh, people, we are the canary in the coal mine. So mm -hmm. uh, we're kind of like indicators of, of whatever's coming in the future. You know, right, so right. the fact that it's hitting us so hard, I think you're, you're, you're right, it's showing the need for that uh, health care for everyone. Um, uh, I know that education, I think that all re revolutions start with education. That's right. right. And I've started this podcast or these interviews, uh, reaching out to different uh, Virginia State graduates and different people that I've met along the way in an attempt to kind of like seek out that professional advice. Yeah. Um, yeah. What advice would you give to parents and to students who are at home now um, and they're concerned and they feel like, well, maybe I'm not going to graduate and maybe I'm, I, it's never going to be the same again? Um, what would you say to them? I, I'll tell you this much. I think that, um, you know, well, first, I lean into it, right? I, I, I think people are right. I don't think things are going to be the same. Again, but that doesn't mean they can't be better, right? right. And, you know, we, we don't know what it's going to be, but we get an opportunity to create the new world uh, when we all come out of our houses um, and address some of the challenges that maybe we didn't pay as close attention to before we went in. Um, my first advice to people would be, to, and, I, and I say this to my team, uh, uh, make sure you get enough sleep, uh, make sure you get enough exercise. Uh, I don't. I don't think people really understand the sheer magnitude of the stress that all of us are under knowing that there's a pandemic outside of our door. You know, we, we try to ignore it, right. um, but it's real. It's real. Even if it hasn't hit you personally, right. I mean, the idea that you're looking at people and you're slightly scared of whether they'll breathe on you, right? That's a, you know, that, that's real. Yeah. And so number one is to protect your mental health mm. as best you can protect your physical health. Um, because one, I, I, I think the full ramifications of this, and again, I don't know, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a doctor and I didn't, I didn't play one on TV and I didn't stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Um, but I think that all of the ramifications of this when Corona is over, it may take a while. Mm -hmm. You know, there may be different aspects of social distancing, but to get to a place where we're no longer worried about giving somebody dap or giving somebody a hug, it may be. Uh, and so for us to stay healthy in this time so that we can help create the world after this, that would be my advice. Right. Perfect. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, if it's one more thing that I, I wanted to say probably before we get out there, uh, I, I guess I always try to go into people's educational origin story. Yeah. Um, where is it that, where is it that you went to elementary school, uh, middle school, and do you have any teachers along the way that may have inspired you or do you have any, any stories that, that come back to you from those early, early days? Brother, look, first of all, I, I, I told you to be careful now. You, you asked a, a president to start telling stories. We might oh, be no. here for a while. Uh, <laughs> but I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm originally from Chicago. Okay. And um, I went to Wacker Elementary School. In, in Chicago, what, elementary school is K through eight. Okay. That's how it is uh, where I grew up. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so I went to Wacker Elementary. I went there all eight years, from kindergarten all the way to eighth grade. And what's the uh, and, makeup of the school? Is it predominantly black? Was it, you know, higher or lower socioeconomic status? 
it was uh, it was all black. It was a hundred percent black, except for the fact, of course, we had a, we had a few white teachers, right? But other than that, it was I mean, it was it was black. And That's the, good and, representation. Oh, it was you know, it was a lot of representation. And the and the reason why we went there, I was actually bused to halfway across the city wow. because my mother and my best friend's mother, and we both went to the same school. Her friend was the assistant principal. Right. So she went to Howard. She went to school with the assistant principal. Right. And so HBCU connections for me started in, you know, in elementary school. My assistant <laughs> wow. principal went to college with my mom. Uh, and that was back in the days when, you know, they could, you know, they could whip you up and, and spank you up and the whole nine. And so oh, yeah. you know, it felt like it felt like I had another mother in school, you know. And yeah. um, uh, so that was that was K through 12. And then I mean, K through eight. And then I went to a very elite boarding school. Mm. in Lake Forest, Illinois, for high school. That was 400 students and maybe, what, six, seven black people, right? So I went wow. from the south side of Chicago, all black. Like, I, I don't think I saw a young person who wasn't black until I went to high school. Like, I'd never met anybody. I never met anybody who wasn't <laughs> black uh, who was my age before I went to high school. That's right? And so in addition to, to, to a boarding school, literally, um, and had another kind of experience. Well, I think in, in K through eight, I learned that that the teachers and the principal they thought I was special. I was somebody, right? Mm. And that I could do anything. I, was, I skipped sixth grade. I skipped seventh grade. I mean, so I was looked at as someone who's intelligent and a star, and and they mm. poured that into me. So right. when I go to high school, they rallied I'm around in, you. Right. I'm in a different environment where the rallying around is quite a bit different. But one of the things that I learned was is that is that people could be different, but different didn't make them better. Mm. It didn't make anybody better. That's why I was like, well, wait a minute. You know, it, it didn't make them worse either, but it didn't make them better. And the fact that they came from, some came from more money than I did and had family names that you might recognize mm. uh, didn't mean that I couldn't compete and win against them. So that's, uh, you know, then then the Howard, I did four years at, uh, four years at Howard right, uh, University. Um, uh, the story goes that uh, I had some scholarships to some other schools and I'll tell you the short version, but uh, I, I told my mother I was looking at some other schools and she said, you'll only look at Howard and I said, uh, you know, um, look, you know, I, I have opportunities, I can do what I want, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to look at that. Okay. And she said, no, you can't. And, you know, you know, she gave me the black woman stare and was like, you'll take your black butt to Howard. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like this. I'm like, mm, no, what's that now? <laughs> That's right. So, so I went to Howard, uh, majored in engineering, graduated uh, at 20, graduated high school at 16, graduated college at 20. Wow. Um, and then went to Northwestern University, uh, got my master's at 21, my PhD in engineering at 24. And my, uh, my claim to fame is I'm the youngest African American to get a PhD in engineering. Wow. How am I not, how did I not know these things already? And I was, re, I was all on Wikipedia and stuff. What's, what's my research is nonsense. <laughs> this is great, so, man. That's, so that's, that's the, uh, amazing. And, and that's the short version. You want the, one day you want the long version. You'll, I'll have to, uh, you'll have to give me your version too. Hey, you know, look, I got the time. So <laughs> I, I, that, that is amazing. And I have the time. And of course, Virginia State would have someone uh, as esteemed as you to be their president. That's got it. Because that just matches. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Hey, look, man, Virginia State is an incredible place. I'm so proud to be at Virginia State. Uh, now it's almost four and a half years. Um, and in some ways, it feels like I've been here forever because I feel like <laughs> a loyal son of Virginia State. My daughter graduated from state last year. Oh, okay. So, you know, um, and then in some ways, it feels like it just started, you know, that it's still fresh and new and exciting. Um, I tell you, if there's anything, I feel, I, I was on campus yesterday mm. and to see it so empty, right? Yeah, it's, 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 really just a, it's a strange, it's a strange mm. thing. And, and I know it's coming back, right? I mean, when, when all of this is over and there's no more Corona, can you, that homecoming, that homecoming is going to be lit. Bruh. I don't know when, I don't know if it's this year. I don't know if it's next year, but everybody's gonna get tired of Zoom calls and homecoming is going to. So that's it's the thing be that crazy. Me, <laughs> that brings me hope, right? You know, to know that I know where it is now, right? There's nobody yeah. there giving it that much, but there's gonna be a day. <laughs> yeah, give it a year or two, hey, and we're gonna be in that joint shoulder to shoulder doing the wobble. Everybody, <laughs> young and young and old. It's, it's young gonna, and it's old. Gonna, 
young, you know, everybody's going to just be excited to see their people. So, uh, you know, I, I pray for that day and I want us to be ready, healthy and, and ready to go on that day. Yeah, we, we might be a year or two out and you know, for vaccines and these types of things start to come into trials and then make their way out to the population. So everybody, please be patient. Wash your hands. <laughs> In the meet, you know, I feel like everybody was washing their hands real hard for like a month or two. And then everybody just sat at home and now we just kind of went back to normal. And everybody wash your hands. Try your best to uh, to to keep this virus at bay. Uh, stay away from grandma for a little while. Don't run around in these streets. Um, and whatever you do, uh, stay keep the faith. Pleasure. Um, I thank you for your time and your your spirit. Uh, like the openness that that uh, that you've displayed is very indicative. You, it's very indicative of Virginia State. Do you stay in the president's mansion on? I don't. I don't. <laughs> okay, I was about to say, there's a little, for those who don't know, there's a little house on campus that the president stays in. And the president would stay there. You'd be just going to class and the president is right there. That's his house. But I always thought that was odd, you know? <laughs> so, so I'm glad you're not in that house at all. That's, I'm not, I'm not, this, this, is not the, this is not the president's house on campus. Though it is a wonderful house. It is yep, I'm sure it's wonderful. And shout out to the president's house. It's amazing. Those who keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> shout, out yeah. to, shout out to the house. The house might be listening. If the house is listening, shout out to the house. Yeah, yeah. The house got Wi Fi. It might be on there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you for your time once again. Uh, my name's Kiwabi Buta. This is President Nicola Abdullah. Uh, thank you. God bless. Peace. Thank you.